take a look at what they call the parent function. The parent function is like your basic function before you start stretching it or compressing it or shifting it and so on. So the basic graph, y equals square root of x, that's our square root function. What I did here is I picked some easy values, 0, 1, 4, and 9 because the square root of zero is zero, the square root of one is one, the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three. So those work out to nice integer values. And remember, we can't take the square root of a negative number, that's gonna give us an imaginary number. So then if I plot these, zero, zero, one, one, four, two, nine, three, you can see this graph, it looks like a parabola on its side, okay, just half a parabola, and it's go gradually going up, up, up. So if you want the domain of this graph, the domain is gonna be x is greater than or equal to zero, so the domain is the x values, whereas the range, the y values are greater than or equal to zero, okay? But now if you wanna look at this in a more general way, this is a more general way of writing the square root equation, y equals a, square root of x minus h plus k, and the a, basically what that does is it stretches the graph if it's greater than one, or compresses the graph vertically if it's between zero and one. And if it's negative, what the negative does is it reflects it over the x-axis, it makes all the positive y values negative. What the h and the k do, the h picks up the graph, okay, and the k picks up the graph and shifts it left and right, up and down. The h is affecting the x direction. It's easy to remember because it's grouped with the x, but the thing to remember is it has the opposite effect. So if I have x minus one, that's actually shifting it to the right one. Okay, you would think minus one, left one, but it actually has the opposite effect, right one. If this was plus one, then it would go left one. This k value here on the outside of the square root, that affects the vertical translation up and down. If it's positive three, it actually does shift it up three. If it's negative three, it actually does shift it down three. So this one has the same effect. This one has the opposite. The a is the stretch or compress. So let's go ahead and graph this one. So I'm gonna shift this right one and up three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think of that as my new starting point, like my new origin. And then all I have to do is focus in on this parent function, y equals two times square root of x. And I just make a little table like zero, one, four, nine. Square root of zero is zero times two is zero. Square root of one is one times two is two. Square root of four is two times two is four. Square root of nine is three times two is six. And then all I have to do is plot these points, these coordinates from here. So zero, zero, uh, right one, up one, right four, up two, okay, so like that, and so on. So you can see this graph is going up to the right, okay? Doesn't, go, doesn't keep going this way. Sometimes students will mistakenly keep going like that. It's only going up and to the right like that. So the domain would be x is greater than or equal to one, okay, so one or greater, and the range would be y is greater than or equal to three, see three or higher. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna talk about is the cube root function, but before I do that, if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT, check out my huge ACT math review video course and uh, my huge SAT math review video course. I go through lots of concepts, teaching, examples, problems that you would uh, expect to see on the test, similar type problems, and how to work with those uh, equations, formulas, things you wanna know, et cetera. So if you're looking to boost your score on those tests, check out those video courses. I've got some free uh, previews so you can see if it's right for you. Uh, but definitely check that out. But let's go through the cube root uh, function now. So the parent function for the cube root function is this guy right here, y equals cube root of x. And I picked some easy values here that are easy to take the cube root of where you get an integer value out. So cube root of negative eight is negative two, cube root of negative one is negative one, cube root of zero is zero, cube root of one is one, cube root of eight is two. Now what's different about the cube root function as opposed to the square root function is you can take the cube root of a negative number. So I plotted those points here. And you can see we're getting like this S-shaped graph like so, okay? So that's your, parent, that's your parent graph right there, okay? The domain is gonna be all real numbers, and the range is also gonna be all real numbers. This gradually keeps going up and down forever and ever. So domain and range, all real numbers for cube root functions. Now, if we wanna write this in a more general way, this is what we have right here. So the A is, remember, the vertical stretch or compress. The H is shifts it left or right, but remember this has an opposite effect on the graph. You know, it's opposite from the sign you see here. The K is the vertical translation up and down. This has the same effect. So if we're looking at this equation here, you can see that we're gonna be shifting left three and down four. The one half has the effect of compressing the graph vertically and the negative reflects it over the X axis. So the easiest way that I found to graph these is to take the shift into account. This is gonna be shifting at left three and down four, okay, so you can think of that as your starting point right there, okay, like your origin. Then focus in on what's left over right here, okay? Make a table of values, pick some easy values like a negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. Cube root of negative eight's negative two times negative one half gives you 
positive 1. A cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, times negative 1 half is a half, 0 gives us 0, 1 gives us negative 1 half, and 8 gives us a negative 1. And what you want to do is you want to plot these from here, because everything's shifting left 3 and down 4, okay? Uh, so let's see if we graph this, it's going to look like what? It's going to be going left 8, up 1, okay? Left 1, up a half, 0, 0, right 1, down a half, and then right 8, I'm just approximating, just to show you. So this graph basically looks something like this. And notice it's different from the parent function where it's going up to the right. This one's actually kind of going down to the right, okay? And that's because of the negative reflected it, the 1 half compressed it, and this shifted it left 3 and down 4. So I hope this helped you to understand how to graph the square root and cube root functions better. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. If you have suggestions for other videos that you'd like me to do or concepts you'd like me to cover that I haven't covered previously, let me know and your question or concept could be featured in a future video. And if you're interested in online tutoring, you like my teaching style, you want to work with me and you know go through uh, some uh, questions that you have or some problems or help you with your, your ACT or SAT preparation or just with help with your math class, uh, go ahead and contact me and uh, let me know if that's something you're interested in. We can talk about uh, availability, pricing, and all that good stuff. But otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the future videos, and I'll talk to you soon.